Very good evening, everybody. Welcome to the webinar, How to Create a Training Plan for US and DSIS. I'm Ming Hui from Fluid Futures, and this is part one of a two-part webinar series held in collaboration with CME Group. Speaking to us today will be Mr. Wong Kon Hao. He is an investment and trading strategist with more than 20 years of experience in the finance industry. In this webinar, he'll be sharing with us how to design a trading plan for the US and DSIS, identify trading opportunities, manage your risk, and more. Before I pass this on to Kon Hao, I'd just like to inform you that if you have any questions throughout the course of the webinar, please feel free to drop them into the questions box as we will have a Q&A session towards the end. And now without further ado, let's have Kon Hao speak to us. All right, uh, thank you Min Hui and thank you everyone for tuning in. And also thank you uh, my sponsor CME Group for sponsoring this event. So tonight we're going to talk about the introduction with trade plan building and definitely after tonight if you could uh, feel free to join us next week at the same time and I'm going to talk about more about uh, trading strategies. Okay now that's something about myself. Um, 25 years in the industry I just changed from 20 to 25. Every five years I changed my profile. It's just amazing that the um, uh, been working with various institutions, banks, brokers for the last 17 years until the last eight years I came out by myself. And it was also during that period that I also worked uh, with uh, the exchanges, SGX and also CME to develop topic. And that's something that I uh, never expected that I'll be doing, but I really enjoy doing that. And so tonight I'm going to share with you this topic and it's very dear to me because uh, over the span of the last 20 over years, I see a lot of traders, they failed. So tonight I'm going to discuss why they failed because the reason they failed is because they have or they did not plan in the first place. I'm going to describe to you very shortly. Okay, so uh, what's my expertise? I'm my expertise in the study of behavioral finance or behavioral science. Now, what is behavioral science? In short, is that we're going to study into the prices, the price behavior. So even in the recent years, something that I also took on that I never expect I'll be doing is uh, to be an expert witness in writing opinion writing to present in courts for especially in these uh, trading dispute as well. Okay, let me just off my camera so that there will be no distraction. Okay. Now, uh, disclaimer is important. So what I'm going to share with you tonight will be based on my personal view and uh, some techniques I'll be sharing with you as well. But all these are my personal view meant for my personal consumption. So if, let's say after tonight, tonight the market is going to open and in fact it's open right now and you felt inspired, you have some ideas you want to trade off tonight or tomorrow or next week, you think about me, I'm going to talk a little bit about long term as well. Uh, you have to understand that all these action is based on your personal uh, um, uh, motivation. So if you are inspired by me or, or influenced by my thoughts tonight, what I'm going to share, uh, please check with your broker. Um, they will be in the right position to advise you. Now, uh, there's this famous saying that if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. And it is very true, whether in trading, especially in investment and also in business in our life, we have to somehow plan before we trigger, before we started a business, a trading plan. We have to plan something like we have to equate what is the probability of success, even in business, in life, and especially in trading. Before you pull that trigger, you have to have to equate what is the probability of success. Now, in the event you pull the trigger and things do not work according to what you expect, that you also have to plan what is the contingency plan. Now, this saying is so true, what it means is that if we fail to plan, we are planning to fail. So in life, it's all about planning, but don't plan too hard, okay? So tonight, I'm going to share with you the, a framework, how to plan and think correctly and act correctly. And I hope that you'll be a blessing to you, especially those that are quite new to trading. So these are the topics we're going to discuss tonight about Volatility, we're going to talk about volatility. Is the recent volatility good? Uh, is volatility good for traders? And some of you may already know that volatility is not very conducive for investors, but definitely volatility is great for traders. So after that, we're going to move on to, uh, we're going to discover about different type of trading methods and what really works for you according 
to your personality according to you yourself. What work, what kind of trading method works for you? Then after that, I'm going to bring you to discover about the recent market uh, trading cycle or investment cycle. Is it conducive to trade right now? Where are we right now? Where the opportunity right now? We're going to discuss towards the end. And at the end of it, um, today is part one. On part two, I'm going to share with you on the trading techniques. But today, I'm going to talk about accumulating profits for short-term trading. So we're going to discuss that too before the Q&A. Please, uh, as I deliver the topic, if you have any questions, feel free to start to submit your questions. So we have the organizer uh, looking at it. At the end of it, she will post all your questions to me and I hope can I answer all of them. Okay, so do join us for part two. And um, if you have come for part one, I think it'll be easier for you to follow through the part two. Part two is to get yourself into proficiency. So today I'm going to introduce to you, which is also as important, that learn how to plan first. Like what I say, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. So planning is really part, a big part in a trading journey. Now, I also want to thank you, our sponsor, uh, CME Group. Now, CME represents Chicago Mercantile Exchange and very honored to able to work with them over the last few years. Um, and by the way, CME Group, it represents a few exchanges in the United States. So um, I'm just very thankful that they have the foresight. About two years ago, they launched this uh, micro e-mini uh, index futures. Now, this micro e-mini index futures as the year passed, the index have got very expensive. The quantum has been higher by days. But because of this micro e-mini futures, index futures, it make possible for the retail investor to get started. Or even if you're expert in trading, later I'm going to share with you in a short while, that they also like the micro e-mini index futures. Now, you can see that it just started about uh, two years back and the volume has been gaining from strength to strength. And especially in a time of uncertainty, uh, that was last year, the pandemic, somewhere in March or March or February, the volume pick up even tremendously. It shows that there's a need to hedge, there's a need to trade in this time of uncertainty and volatility. And moving forward, markets is still gonna get even more volatile and uncertain, and definitely futures or index trading is gonna be very handy, whether if you're a hedger, or definitely if you're a trader, you're going to use index futures. And this is my job tonight. Okay. And this is just an open interest, a study of open, open interest. Now, what is open interest? Open interest means that once there's an overnight position, traders, investors, they hold an open overnight position, the exchange is going to register that. Now, open interest is very important. To me, it, may, it means this. It means that people are taking their position seriously. Therefore, they created a position overnight. Now, you could see that in the gray zone is the open interest uh, for the micro e-mini SM uh, or the micro e-mini index. And over the last two years, you have grown from strength to strength. So this is a very good indication that people are not just taking trading casually on intraday, but they are also taking position as well. And that's something that I'm very proud about because since the start of this micro e-mini index futures, uh, um, and I was engaged by, or I'm still engaged with CME Group, that now you could see that in Asia alone, Asia alone, that the pie that we've taken uh, to participate in this uh, daily volume, we have been in Asia, the traders has been increasing from strength to strength. And uh, I'm not trying to claim any credit, uh, but I'm just trying to say that I'm be very honored to be part of this growth. <laughs> okay, and about uh, last year, they launched the micro e-mini option as well. So you have time. So later on, I'm going to send you the link. Uh, you can request for the link. I'm going to send the full tag of the notes, including the uh, all these micro uh, index futures, the deck, you could study it if, uh, if you find that what I've presented make a lot of sense and you want to study more into uh, the CME, uh, micro e-mini index futures, there are four of them. Uh, later, I'm going to introduce one by one to you. Okay, So uh, that's it for the CME deck and now I'm going to move into my topic tonight. Okay, now how to measure volatility, like what I said earlier, uh, investors do not welcome volatility, but trader, we welcome volatility. 
Now, so my question to you right now is this, is volatility good or bad? Is volatility good or bad? Now, 10 years ago, um, I asked the same questions in this environment here. And the what I gathered is this, most of them were say, uh, about 70% of say volatility is not welcome, okay? But things have changed over the last 10 years, especially during Donald Trump era where he introduced the trade war and the trade war is here to stay. Now, after the trade war, that's about four years by now, things started to get volatile all over the world. Now, as I asked this question again about before the pandemic, about three years ago, do you welcome volatility? And I was quite amazed and quite shocked, I would say that the environment have shaped to according to the volatility today. Now, um, after the trade war or during the trade war, that when I ask the same question, I'm surprised that about more than 50% say that they welcome volatility. And that gives me a sense that the investors and traders have grown into maturity, that they kind of know what is volatility about. They also knew that volatility is unhealthy for investor, but it is definitely good for traders. Okay, so that's something that my topic here tonight is about trading and volatility. We have to welcome them because it's here to stay and we just have to learn how to manage them. Now, with volatility, there will be opportunity. Now, let me just um, share with you. Now, all of us can do that. We can learn how to equate volatility. Now, this chart is the NASDAQ chart, the daily chart. Now, you can see that it represents um, in the year of, let me see here, 2019, 2020, 2021. Now, let's say after tonight, 2022 come, and we still remember what I shared tonight. You can make your own measurement how to measure volatility at your own home. Now, how it works is this. Now, let's measure about volatility, how to uh, how to calculate that on my own personal finding. Okay, so you're not going to find this in any textbook, but all of us can do that. Now, again, the notion here is that volatility is great for traders. Okay. Now, we could see that this a daily range in 2019, uh, we calculated here is that the whole day range it was 179 points. And in 2020, of course, that was during March period, you still remember that that was the beginning of the pandemic for United States. And that single day, the average single day, if you could see across that period, the average single day, the daily range, it was 980 points. How about today in 2021? And this is March. And today we're at the, at the end of, till end of March. You could see that the average daily range, I'm talking about the average daily range, is 542 points. Now, all these points, it will not make sense until you convert them to percentage. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, let's go back to 2019. Now, we could see that the average range is about 179 points. And if I were going to divide it by the, uh, then the NASDAQ was at 7,100. Now, the daily range, average daily range, 179 divided by 7,100, it will give me about 2.5%. Now then, like what I say, after the trade war being triggered, um, market start to get pretty volatile. I would say that at about 2% and above, market is considered pretty volatile. Volatile enough to trade as a trader, volatile to find daily, weekly, monthly trading opportunity. Okay, volatile. So volatility is good for traders. So how do I make sense of it? I would say that anything about 1.5% and 2% is pretty good volatility. Now let's look at in 2020, and this was a very crazy month or year <laughs> in 2020. You take 980 divided, then it was about 7,006 divided by 7,006. You could see a single day volatility as about close to 13%. And that's super volatile. Now, when the market get really super volatile, I still have a view. As a trader, we still develop a view, but personally, I will not, I will try to avoid the outright futures or outright derivatives. I will prefer to use adopt deploy option when the market is super volatile, but yet I still have a view. I will deploy option. That's based on my personal trading style. But today in 2019 was pretty volatile and 2020 was very volatile. 
And in 2021, to me, the volatility just good. Okay? 542 points, that's this month volatility divided by 12,500 is about 4.3%. It is volatile, very volatile, and it's pretty volatile, and this is very, very volatile. Okay, So <laughs> volatility, again, is not a bad thing. Now, I'm going to move on in a short while later, but you just have to put a, a, a bookmark here that as a trader, we have to understand that we have to welcome volatility because when there is volatility, it means that there will be trading opportunity. So in uh, the whole night, I'm going to uh, help you to discover what is all this volatility all about. Okay, so understand about NASDAQ, about micro e-mini NASDAQ, uh, the first thing that you have to do is that, um, because this tonight is level one, the thing that the first thing that you need to do is that in every futures contract, you have to find the contract specification, which is one point, how much does it worth? Now, the contract spec states that for micro e-mini NASDAQ, one point is two US dollars. Now, just remember, one point worth two US dollars. Of course, you can get into a smaller scale, about 0 0.25 points. 0 0.25 points is 50 cents US, but just for this demonstration tonight, one point is equal to two US dollars. Now, say for example, you have a view now. Say for example, now the NASDAQ is about 13,200. Say for example, you have a view to buy for tonight and you want to hold for the next two weeks. You have a view for the next two weeks, the market is going up trend, say for example. Now, as you purchase at 13,200, now, so you have to know exactly what am I purchasing. Now, since one point is two US dollars, can I say that 13,200 times two is 26,400? That's simple mathematics. Now, it also means this. At now, say for example, you have a view that you want to buy and hold for two weeks because you believe that the next two weeks the market is going to have a pending uptrend. You believe that maybe you'll hit up to about $13,600 or 13,600 points. Now, so when you purchase tonight at 13,200, what does it mean? It means that you're buying 100 tech stocks listed in US, US 100 tech stocks worth $26,400. And to me, it's really meaty. It's really significant. It, meant, it means a lot to me. Okay? It means something to me. But can you imagine, can, can you participate in a hundred buy a purchase of hundred stock? Uh, how much is it going to cost you? It's going to cost you a lot. But because of this micro e-mini NASDAQ, I could participate to buy into a hundred listed US company work. Right now, say for example, is if the market is at 13,200, I understand now it's a bit slightly lower. It means that it's worth $26,400. Okay, I'm moving really fast, uh, but I think I'm at the right pace. Now, this is, I say here that different types of trading method, which one work best for you? Now, let me just introduce you to uh, a matrix in a short while. So this matrix is over the last uh, two decades, two and a half decades on the market. I kind of coined this matrix so to help uh, my friends, my audience, my follower to understand what is trading all about, you know? Uh, what is the what is my fit to in whether should I trade in a intraday trading should I trade into the position trading so what is my fit so later on I'll help you to discover that but before that let's discover about uh, this character his her name is called Catherine my apology if your name is called Catherine I'm not referring to you okay just a fictitious uh, figure where I encounter a lot of them when I was a broker myself. So I handled a lot of Catherine. Now, who is Catherine? Now, Catherine is someone that she do not have an identity. Now, can I say that um, after dealing with so many individuals and even institution and um, um, yeah, corporates, I realized that many traders, they fail is because they do not have an identity of what they want. Now, most of us were individual and most of us, we have this greedy nature. Now, if I'm going to say that uh, I have something quick to make some money, most of us will say, yes, I will take it. Yeah. So now deep inside us, most of us, I know may not be some of you, but you have to understand that human nature is that deep inside us, most of them, we like to make a uh, 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 profit at the fastest turnaround time. Same for business, right? So we have this nature of we want to make quick money. Now, 
again, this uh, problem with Catherine is that she got an identity issue. Now, most of us would like to, most of us are a short-term trader. Can I say that? Most of us are short-term trader, but along the timeline, we got lost and we became a long-term investor that we hold our losses. Now, this is Catherine. What's the profile? She's a manager. She's not a business owner. Now, as a manager, level and above, she's hardworking, she's diligent, uh, but she don't have a lot of time. But she has some money and she knows that investment is part of the deal in her life. She better learn how to invest. She let, better learn how to trade. If not, when time's up, maybe uh, she's 65 or 70 years old, she's all by herself. She needs to start to learn about investment. But the thing about her is that she do not know deep about investment and trading. Now, she started off as a trader, ended being a long-term investor because of an identity crisis. Now, this is Catherine. Now, how this works is this. Now, Catherine, now remember she started off as a trader. Price dropped a lot already. My friend says it's a good time to buy. I will buy now. Now, usually she will not have a strong opinion of her own. Now, tonight, with this part one, I want you to build a strong opinion of how to plan your short-term trade. A strong opinion you have to develop the strong view that you are responsible for every action that you're going to take okay at the end of it you will learn <laughs> every losses every profit every mistake we have to learn because if there's no learning uh this mistake is just a wasted mistake now so catherine usually hear from someone and she bought because the, the price seems very low after that market did she said oops it is okay i'll buy some more to average it See, I'm told you I'm right. Then she she find, feel a bit stressed right now. And the market broke new low, she cut loss. She got so scared, yeah. Because she was a trader, she over-traded, she cut loss. Then after that, she says, uh, she signed and she said, please don't tell me I cut at the low again. Every time I cut the low, market rebound. Have you encountered that? I encountered that in the past myself, okay? But then she will start to blame, call the broker myself, then I was a broker, say, hey, Econong, do you believe that uh, the broker uh, saw my stock, you know, they figure out my stock and they trigger my stock there for the market to go up? I don't think so, especially in Singapore, in this part of the world, it's so regulated. No, I don't think so. If the broker could see your stock and trigger your stock, that's to me, I think that's illegal. So you better report to the authority, okay? So in this part of the world, no, I don't think that broker can access to your stock and trigger it. It's the mass market psychology. Okay, most of us will feel that way, I understand. <laughs> so after she cut loss, the market came off slightly. She said, see, I told you, market is coming down. And then market go up, she said, I don't believe this. Never mind, I will wait for the market to come down. I buy back again. She got very angry right now. But the market didn't wait for her, it continued to pan up. Then she said, I think I'm right all this while to make a purchase, right? I think I better buy now, if not, I'm gonna miss it again. So she bought, she reinstated her position again. Then after that, after she bought, the market traded slightly lower, but because of the past experience, she said, no, I must hold on this position. As she hold on, then the market, um, she started to read into the market, is this stock good? Is this, uh, does it have a good PE, all this and that? She started to then, now she didn't plan for this. Then she said that, she called her broker, say, oh, the broker said, yeah, the good PE, good book value. She said, okay, in this case, I think I will hold it. Now you 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 look at Catherine here today is that she hold position only after a loss of 20%. Then she decided to hold a position. Now we have to make it very clear here is that your plan have to make before you pull the trigger. If it's for a short-term trader, if markets start to turn the other way, we have to start to exercise our risk management. Do not hold on to uh, losses. But for Catherine case, it's quite sorry for her. As she hold on, she said that I think I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm, it's, a, it's a good stock. I'm a value investor. Then after the market continued to uh, move down. So that's, uh, that's something about Catherine that I hope you take, you can associate with uh, about Catherine. Now her problem lies because there's no plan in the beginning. Now, so how should you plan for a trade? You have to recognize that like I say that this matrix I've designed, I hope that uh, as I present it to you, it'll be a blessing to you. It'll bring much more clarity how you should plan for your trade. Now, tonight I'm gonna to talk about, I'm not gonna talk about long-term investor or short-term investor because th that's not the topic tonight. Until the time where I have opportunity to uh, dwell in this topic about investor, then I will come in to share about 
investing. Okay, but um, for long-term investor, I just want to give you some clue here. Is a holding period is three years or more. It's quite scientific. Uh, like what I say, we'll talk about it next time in the future. But for short-term investor, the holding period is about three months to three years. Since it's not long-term, so short-term investor to me definitely would be your position is three years and below. So from three months to three years. Now, why three months is very simple logic here is because most of the uh, futures contract, option contracts, all this derivative, there is an expiry date. Now, the expiry date usually is about three months. So I would call that between three months of holding of position between three months to three years, I will qualify you as a short-term investor. Okay, now I'm going to move on to short-term trader very quickly. Now, as a short-term investor means that my holding period means I have a position, I would like to hold it between three months to about three years. Now, usually I'm quite selective over the, all this instrument class. I will dwell in uh, get into stocks, unit trust, ETF, and etc. But I may consider derivatives as a hedge. Now, for example, if I invested in stocks, my position is about I have a three years time frame. I believe in three years time, the market may go up between three months to three years. But somehow in between, say, for example, I am into my half a year holding. But the next, say, for example, the next two weeks, I reckon that market may start to ease off quite a bit. But I'm an investor. I do not want to get in and out of my stocks now. So but having said that, I'm confident that the based on certain analysis, I'm confident that I have this view that market likely to have a major correction for the next two weeks, say, for example. Now, how do I use, how do I hedge all this investment uh, position? I will deploy derivatives, which I'm going to talk about in a very short while to hedge. While I'm holding on to my stocks, as the market came off, because I'm short with using, say, for example, for example the micro e-mini Dow Jones, I'm short on that. So as the market came down, my stock holding suffered a paper loss, but my micro Dow Jones, mini Dow Jones uh, yield a positive return. That's how we hatch into it. But tonight, what I'm going to share with you is about short-term trading and intraday trading. Now, so short-term trading, I'm very specific here, is that means that when you see an opportunity, you have to be clear where you're going to place it. Now, if the opportunity is for short-term trading it means that your holding period is between about two days to about three months okay two days to three months then now what are the instrument that i'll be uh, deploying definitely derivatives and i may consider stocks now once i have a view about a particular market okay if my view is that for the next two days to three months i have this view i'm going to engage myself into this market now, I can choose to get into stocks or I can choose to get into derivative. But say, for example, I'm very clear about this. My view is that for the next two days overnight to about three months period, I'm seeing market to go up Okay, just before three months. Then definitely based on my uh, experience, I will go for derivatives. Yeah, I know some of you may want to buy into stocks, but can I share with you this based on my experience here is that Every instrument are designed for a specific purpose. Traders, you trade in derivatives. Investor, we invest in stocks. Now, out of this four quadrant, I'm um, all of them, but it really depends and depends on the time and season. I will find the right match. Okay. Now, let me just showcase to you why, as a trader, I do not trade in stocks. I invest in stock, but I don't trade in them. Why? Very simple reason. Now, everywhere I go when, I, uh, when I'm tasked to, to talk about this topic uh, in different country, I will go to, since I'm representing uh, um, CME group tonight, let's draw the uh, top loser of the United States uh, NYSE uh, stocks. Now, you could see that it's almost everyday occurrence, whether it's, is it in US, in Hong Kong, if I, if I go to fly to Hong Kong, but thankfully now I don't fly, I can present it at the comfort of my home or even Singapore or Malaysia. Now, every single day, if you look at the top percentage loser, you'll see a few handful or many handful of this top loser, minimum about 
uh, this is overnight loss, about 10% or more. Now look at this, just the uh, first three handful, about 15 of them, you could see that uh, up to about the last row is still minus 19% losses. Now, can you imagine if I'm going to buy, but for this to happen in the index is quite highly unlikely. But on the stocks, you could see that it's almost a daily occurrence. If you pick the wrong stocks, if you're not careful enough, overnight, it may cause you to have a down 20% loss. Say, for example, today, down is about 32,000. Now, a down 20%, it represents that if you bought today, tomorrow, the market is down 6,400 points. And that is a huge loss. Now, if I got to trade the stocks, I have to be mindful that the occurrence of such risk it is always there, which I try to avoid all this unnecessary risk, being a trader. But if I got to uh, uh, dabble with the index futures, what is my overnight risk? Is there a possibility that I will enter into, into this very sticky situation? The answer is highly likely a no. Okay. So just want to uh, uh, bring a point to you here is that if you are going to be a short-term trader, that make sure that you may want to join me, consider derivative solely and uh, not too much on the stock market. Stocks will be for short-term investor. Now, how about for intraday trader? Intraday trader, it means that you have a view, that your view is only for the day itself. You do not have a view even for the overnight market. And I kind of like intraday trading, especially at night when I'm free, that I have no appointment, and maybe my wife slept much earlier than I do. I always hope that, that I have time for all myself, I would like to double with intraday trading. It means that, but we do not have a view for tomorrow, but we just have a view for the day itself. And I can tell that the more volatile the market is, the better it is for intraday traders. So basically, uh, in part two, which is next week, I'm going to share with you a little bit more detail about the trading strategy for intraday trader. So now for this demonstration, I just want to uh, showcase to you. So what are the instrument type here is definitely derivatives. Okay, so now um, let me just use one example called the Russell. Now, what is Russell or Russell 2000 or micro e-mini Russell 2000? Now, Russell is another index apart from the common uh, index that we know, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and S&P. Now, Russell is also, to me, is important. It measures the smaller companies, um, not the big names, not the Google, not the Apple, but measure the smaller listed company in US. How many of them? 2,000 of them. It's just like measuring the SME of the listed company in the United States. Not the very big one, but the average ones. Now, you could see that the volatility is quite nice. In fact, if you could see that the trend, there's a tree pick here, the volatility is very nice. Now, so this represented, uh, it, Russell represents 2,000 smaller share listed companies over there. Now, let me just introduce you to Russell is that one point it is five US dollar. Now this is something that the exchange exchange have designed and we cannot change that. And to me, it is good, okay? It is good. Now one point is five US dollars. Now say for example, and now Russell is about 2003, Russell 2000. Now since one point is five, now say for example, now you have a view. Now your view, just now earlier, I used a view of going up, right? But now I have a view that market is coming down. Say for example, I just read before the seminar start, the webinar start that the yield, the 10 years yield treasury yield is going up. So we say based on this news, say for example, I reckon that for the next one week, that the Russell, the whole index is going to move down tremendously, say for example. And at this point at 2003, I want to see, I want to take a short view for just the next one week. So we have to understand that based on this contract specs, one point is five US dollars. If I were to short now at 2003, what does it mean? It means that 2003 times five, 11,500 is as if I'm shorting, naked short, sell short. 2,000 shares listed companies of in NYSE, 2,000 shares worth $11,500. So you got to, uh, if you find that $2,500 now, Every individual, our background is different. If you find this, Conha is so little, $11,500 $11, worth is nothing, the quantum. I can take 10 times the size bigger, about 100,000. So if that's you, then you trade 10 micro e-mini Russell, okay? But if you are just comfortable with one, then you just deal in one. Now, 
you don't have to follow your neighbor or whatever trader how many lots they trade now the thing about trading is this you at your own standing right now you trade at your own pace so now now all of us you have to understand this all of us we have a unique race to run tonight I'm just going to share with you the framework now all of us have a unique race to run you don't have to follow what your neighbors is doing you run your own unique race now if you find that one lot is just good and comfortable for you at eleven thousand five hundred, then go for one lot now if you run your own unique race you will always be the champion okay so yeah always run a unique race i'm just going to share with you the framework for you to understand that if you're comfortable with one go with one if you're comfortable with two lots go with two lots doesn't matter what who you're following is trading 20 lots 50 lots but that is their standing but your standing if it's one just settle with one okay now how to uh, equate uh, how to uh, trade the uh, intraday where next week i'm going to share with you a little bit more detail but today i'm just going to talk about profit taking for intraday now as you could see that this is a uh, is it a daily chart for intraday yeah this is daily chart for daily chart for Russell 2000 now you could see here is this now I'm not going to talk about the entry point right now but just going to give you some clue here say for example as an intraday trader earlier I said that your profile is this you only have a view right now and you do not have a view for the next day but right now, that means you're very clear that I am an intraday trader right now, okay? Now, then this is what you have to plan accordingly. That means within the day, if you find that at this point, say for example, the market has slammed down a lot based on some news being announced, you have went down a lot. And you feel that now for intraday trading, usually what I do is that within the day, I will try to um, discern has the low been met for the day okay this is usually what i do has the low been met for the day because it slammed down the very low and suddenly rebounded so i always ask myself this question if my answer is yes yes i believe just for the day the low has been met then there's a case for me to enter into a position but next week i'm going to talk about more how to trade in intraday then you establish a position now i'm going to talk about how to handle the profit tonight now, then you've got to study into the March dynamic. Say, for example, for Mini Russell, uh, the March dynamic, I could see that you could see averagely throughout the whole month of uh, March, uh, every day is about 110 points, right? 110 points. Now, based on March, it's about 110 points. Now, we cannot possibly say that I want to take 110 points profit because you are intraday trader. Now, if you have this idea that I want to make 100 points tonight, then can I say this? I got to lecture you here is that you are just unrealistic. You're going to fail. <laughs> You're going to fail big time being an intraday trader. You cannot be greedy. Now, you have to recognize that as of March, the average range, say, for example, is about 110. Now, I'm, I know how to get in, but we also know how to time ourselves to get out because what we want is to collectively want to collect profit. Now, how you get out is this. We have the keyword is that we have to be realistic. Say, for example, you're good in getting your entry. Now, can I say that if the dynamic is about average range, about 110, can we take about 20% of the range, the average range? Now, 10% will be 11 points. 22 points, that will be, uh, sorry, 20%, that'll be 22 points. Now, 22 points, one point is five, so 22 times five. And you can work out what's the amount. So now, once you get in, you also have to quickly position when to get out. And for at the current dynamic to get a 22 points within the day is not much of an issue today. So basically for intraday trading is that say, for example, you're good in getting in. I just assume they're good in getting in. If not, please join me next week. I'm going to talk about entry. Then tonight I'm going to talk about getting out. So you cash out about 20 to 22 points profit each time for the month of March. I'm just going to study for uh, 2021 in January. And that was a dynamic. Band. Back then, the dynamic in December and January is about 55 points. If I'm going to cash out about 20 points profit, that would be about, uh, how many points would that be? 11 points. Okay. So then I will 
designed that every time I want to cash out, take profit, I would just target for 11 points. But today, the market is expanding, is getting the, when I say expanding, I'm referring to the volatility, it's getting a bit volatile and it's okay to ask for about 20 points profit each time you get in. Okay, like what I say that there's a two-part series and um, the organizer asked me to design two parts. So today you'll learn about as important because we have to learn how to plan. So next week, do join me on part two that we're going to get into the proficiency that I'm going to discover about the trading strategy for short-term trader and as well as intraday trading as well. Okay, now let me just continue where we are. Um, the rest of the topic here is that where exactly we are now, even as a short-term trader and an intraday trader, especially for short-term trader, I still have to understand where is the major trend. That I will advocate that even if you're a short-term trader means that you have a position holding between two days to three months. I will still advocate that have a view of the long-term trend. Why is it so? Where's the trend tonight here? is that I reckon that tonight the trend uh, is we are at the growth stage, at the growth stage. And this growth stage, there's three parts of growth stage, which is the first part is, um, it's called the skepticism stage. Second part is called the maturity stage. And the last part, which is called after the trade war, is called the uh, euphoric stage. Very steep, okay, euphoric stage. Now there's three parts to a trend. Now, why a trend is this? Uh, I'm going to explain to you very shortly, but let's look at this uh, very interesting cycle of the market, of the US market. Now, you could see that um, after the uh, Great Depression, the market, the US market have one big cycle, which lasted for about 45 years. Now, um, as we study the uh, Great Depression, and in the uh, 60s and 70s, the correction. Now, this correction is about 70% drop. And in the recent last 40 years, we don't see that at all. So I say that the new cycle have begun in 1980, as you could see that. And each cycle for US nature is about 45 years. And today, we have entered into the 41-year cycle. So if you ask me where is US today, where's the trend today, in a short while, I'll explain to you why. To know the trend is important for short-term trader in a very short while. But where are we today? I believe that we're in the stage eight and nine of this growth trend, which is getting a little bit tired, but it is still an uptrend. Okay. Now, why trend is important is this. Say, for example, US market today. Let's say this is a 40 years cycle, starting in 1980 and today is 2021, so it's 41 years. Now, my view for the US market is, is this, it's still uptrend. It is still uptrend, but the risk is high. High means that I do not want myself to get into a position without planning and I got stuck for a day, a week, a, a few weeks to a few months and the market started to have a meltdown. Say, for example, if I'm caught in the turning of the major trend, my risk is exceptionally high, okay? Now, volatility, definitely, we study the volatility, we also discussed that we have to welcome volatility because volatility, it also means opportunity for traders. Now, so how does it apply to short-term trader knowing the major trend is this? Now, we know that when the trend is uptrend, there's trough, there's peak, there's trough, there's peak. It means that my objective is this. Since the market is uptrend and being a short-term trader, my objective is that every time the market do a correction, every time when the market do a correction, I will be looking out for a buying opportunity. Why? Because the market is still in this uptrend. Now, I repeat, if the major trend is up, this is a major trend, trend as we could see, but every time when the market correct, I will be very focused to look out for a buying opportunity for short-term position. Short-term position means that I'm going to hold between two days to about three months. Do I not short the market? Yes, I will short, but knowing that I'm going against the trend, I will keep my short-term trade short-term. But I'll keep my buying a bit more in the longer term. How long is between two months to, uh, sorry, two days to three months? I think now it makes a little bit more sense to most of us here. So where is US market here today? If this is a 40 year cycle, I think it's well here. So it's still trending up, but you've got to be very cautious about it. So try not to hold for too long. So 
definitely the US market is great for trading. But to me, in my opinion, US market is not too conducive to be a long term investor. So my portfolio is that I'm a long term investor in the Asia market, but definitely for my trading portfolio, it is in the US market. Okay. Now, uh, bear in mind here is that the long trend, long term trend is still uptrend for US market. So therefore, as a short term trader, what is our job? We look for retracement to get into the market. We look for retracement to get into the market. That doesn't mean that we don't go short, just that the short, I keep it really short term, maybe just a few days. But when I go for long in the matrix of short term trader, I may hold for a few days to a few weeks or possibly to the next three months. Now, this example is this. In the month of early March, uh, there was 6th of March here. Yeah? In the month of early March, this is February and that's March. So um, late February to early March, the market took a dip. And I've been constantly looking for a buying opportunity. As you could see here, some of you may recognize this called the bullish engulfing body. And that's called the hammer. And this one I posted on the case study chat group. So later I, I will um, describe to you how you can engage yourself, engage in the chat group as well. Now, so as the market retraced down, these are great buying opportunities. So when you are a short term trader or intraday trader, to me, technical analysis, it is very, very important. You know, sometimes I don't even include fundamental because all these are very short term, but the market behavior the price behavior it is of essence it will it will give us a sense of whether the market is fearful enough when the market is fearful enough it created an undervalued situation of this perspective the 60 minutes okay so but when the market is overconfident it gives me a sense that it's, it's too greedy it's overvalued so i just want to give some idea to you why is all this market psychology now um after this um if you could see here, after some time have passed, about two weeks, the market today is about nearing about 33,000 back again. So these are what I call, if you hold for about three weeks from now, this is the return, the uh, reward that you could see. And next, we're going to talk about how to manage losses as well. Okay. Okay, so after tonight, if you find that you want to really uh, get into how to identify market reversal, uh, this is a program that I've done with CME as well, but it's being recorded. So I dedicate just solely this one hour to talk about identified market reversal, Hamel especially, how to identify Hamel with a higher weighting. Now, if you look at a chart, there's a lot of Hamel all over the shop, but don't be too casual about picking any Hamel. Be very selective. Okay, so this program is free. So maybe if I think the time is still early after to, after this presentation tonight, if you find that um, you still have stomach to go for another one hour, you can just tune into this free program, go and study about how to equate or discern the hammer that has higher weighting. Okay, it makes a lot of sense there. Now let me just talk about the other topic here is that about accumulating profits. Okay, uh, it's a very common question that usually I ask traders um in different countries in different environment usually i'll ask them now it's a very shameful thing uh, in, including myself about many years ago i asked myself so exactly how you define trading now as i ask this question i'm also asking you can you define what is trading can you define when i ask um this question about could you define what is investment now most of us were able to define it in their own ways they say that investment is buying into something of value over time it will appreciate. So it's quite easy to verbalize it. But when I ask this question, could you define what is trading to a class of traders? Say, for example, we have a class of 134 traders tonight. Now, can you ask, Can as I ask this question, think about it. Can you define what is trading? Okay, we don't have much time. I'm going to give you the answer of what I have registered in the past classes. Now, some will say that it's a buy, buy and sell, uh, buy low, sell high, or vice versa. Some will say, oh, it's uh, how to define trading is about, about making quick profit. Some will say that uh, trade and know how to cut loss. And some will say it's a high frequency trading and, and a lot. And then I'll look at a dictionary. Some of you may be looking, flipping through the uh, Google dictionary right now. It says that it's a transaction done between buyer and seller. Now, my question to you here is that, is this really the definition of trading that you're tuning in tonight? The answer is, of course not. So exactly what is trading? 
Okay. Then um, when I asked the class, I say that most of the traders will get started in trading, not knowing how to define what is trading. How could that be? It's so shameful that how could you not able to define what is trading even before you get started? We have to clearly have a clarity to identify exactly what is trading. So once you have a clarity, then you know exactly how to trade well and trade correctly. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a very short, uh, maybe it'll take about the next two minutes, how to define what exactly is trading. All right, I attended this uh, uh, meeting, very interesting, it's about how to, a manhood meeting. So in this, uh, the speaker talked about how to be a manhood. So basically his demonstration is this. You know, if uh, he able to double his income every single day, say for example, he, ha he has this ability I do not have. Warren Buffett do not have this ability to double his income every single day. Now say for example, just for illustration, that you could double your income every single day. From one cent become two, two become four. Now guess what will be the day 31 like, okay? It will be this amount. It's just so amazing, right? But okay, of course, these are not realistic, but it does bring a point to me about more than 15 years ago. As I said through this um, seminar, talking about manhood, he talked about as a man, we have to be very consistent with our words. And he said that because of the consistency it produces compound earnings. And that really speaks to me about more than 50 years ago and apply this concept in my trading. Now is this. Now in a more realistic example is this. Say for example, um, of course the example every day he make 100%, which is highly, highly unlikely. But say for example, if you're that good, every month you could make 2%. Starting with 10,000, every month make 2%, that's about 10,200, 10,404. And end of the year is nothing great, 12,682. Okay. But if you continuously apply this concept every month, because when it comes to trading, you have to understand that it's never about huge return. It's always about collective small earnings. So in a similar measure, if we make a mistake as well, it's also a small losses. But our objective is that we try to be as skillful as we can as we trade. Say we are active trader, we try to clock each time about one or two percent gain off your account but we try to be as skillful as we can every time we try to make more of one percent or two percent profit and lesser of the one or two percent losses and over time it make a lot of sense okay now this is just an example for the next 30 years i hope you make sense to you now so how i define what is trading is this it is to be a consistent how to achieve a consistent consistency in my performance both in my profit and losses. Like what I say, I would urge you that uh, if you are trying trading, you have certain formulas, you have certain methodology, please go ahead. Uh, but you have to understand that it's a collectively small earnings. You uh, collectively accumulate, accumulate them, but in the event of losses, it's it got to be small losses as well. Okay, each, if each profit is about one or two percent, make sure that each losses is also about one or two percent percent losses. But you try to be as good as you can to clock more profit than losses. Then everything will start to compound, and um, I hope you can join me. <laughs> so I'm I'm running my own race as well. When I run my own race, I will always claim the first prize. So forget about what your neighbors are doing. You, we always run our unique race. Then you always be number one, okay? Small earnings is fine, but we have to be mindful, collectively accumulate all the small earnings. This is the methodology of trading. It's not about investment. Investment is another methodology. So uh, before I go to Q&A, um, I just want to, um, after tonight, if you missed the QR code, you can just take some pictures here. Um, you can study into it. It's a one hour program. In this program, I talk about very technical, um, about how to find those hammer that has high weighting. Okay. Now, so after this program, you find that uh, you can't wait for next week. And even after next week, you find they want to go deeper. Um, if you find that whatever I, after watching that video and after tonight, it make a lot of sense to you. Uh, you can continue to learn on this topic called timing the market. Now, so in this timing market, um, I'm going to talk about not it's beyond technical. It's technical, but it's beyond that. I also going to include the market psychology into it. 
the scientific term for market psychology is called behavioral analysis. Once you combine technical analysis and behavior analysis together, to me, it's a very powerful analytical tool. It's not a system. The system is in my mind, in your mind. Okay? So uh, after that, go through the curriculum of this program called Timing the Market. If it makes sense to you, uh, you can consider subscribe. Um, I have a coupon code, which is a 20% discount. So if you find that after you study through the curriculum, it makes a lot of sense to you. Um, the coupon code, the 20% discount is valid until tomorrow, 12 noon. Okay, so you can consider that. And the best part is that every week after this program, it's an e-learning, um, I'm going to have this weekly broadcast of a current market case study based on what exactly what we study. Okay, so a lot of them, they really enjoy the benefit of this program. After that, they still continue to, able to continue to engage me, we can discuss. But the greatest joy is that um, I would love to receive the participant case study instead. Then let me make correction. Let me endorse it. So that's the greatest joy of this whole program. Okay, so um, look through the curriculum if it makes sense to you. Now, before we go to the Q&A, um, how do we get connected? Um, okay, do like my Facebook page. I have this Facebook page. Uh, the name is Con Hao. That's my name, joined together. Um, I will post charts, uh, very interesting opinions, writing. Sometimes I wrote the article myself, uh, but definitely on any major turns of the market, I will post on the uh, my Facebook page. And the recent observation, the last few posts, is that I observed something about Mini Russell. There is a divergence that is going on. So if you can track back the last few articles, I think that's very interesting. So the rest are my YouTube channel and any question, you can always email me at conhow at waypedia.com. Okay, let's go to the Q&A right now. And, um, oops, sorry, I've uh, exceeded some time, but let's take on maybe uh, the next, uh, could I just borrow another 10 minutes from you? We do some Q&A here, yeah. All right, um, thank you, Conhow. There are no questions from the floor, actually. And since time is almost up, um, if there's anything else you'd like to share with us in more detail, we could do so, uh, else we can conclude the webinar session tonight. Okay, maybe what I do is that I will discuss about next week um, session. Oh, yes, before that, okay. Um, now, I have this uh, 10 question to discover about what is your investment type. So what you could do is that uh, you can do a QR code scan here. I will send you the link. Um, through this link, I'll also email you the slides tonight and also the CME deck about all this micro e-mini, uh, uh, the whole deck of the micro e-mini, what you need to know about micro e-mini and their performance. Now, so this uh, profiling test is very interesting here is that uh, through these 10 questions, you will uh, discover who exactly you are deep inside you. Okay, so I designed these 10 questions, it's very straightforward. Uh, some of you, after you've done the question, you may feel angry with me, but please don't feel angry with me because they always felt that they are a value investor. So after when they've done this question, uh, they got to know that they are short-term trader, they got angry with me. So, okay. But it's just deep inside them, that's who they are. But that doesn't mean that, okay, now after you do this 10 question where I will send email to you, the link, um, if you are a short-term trader, but you find that, no, I don't like to do short-term trading, it is fine but at least you know that deep inside you, you are a short-term trader. You can still go ahead to do your long-term investment, uh, short-term investing, short-term trading and intraday trading. Now, remember that I'm more of a short-term trader, but I also have the other quadrants, the long-term investing, short-term investing, and sometimes I like to do intraday trading as well. Okay, so um, you can send me your requests. I think some of you have scanned this. Uh, just type in your email. Uh, give me about 24 hours. I'll give the link and also tonight the uh, slides as well. Okay, so next week, uh, before I talk about next week, is there any, any question that uh, we have submitted? Okay, no, I'll just continue. Now, so to, um, next week, I'm going to give you a recap of what we have discovered to, uh, tonight. Then after that, I'm going to, uh, okay, now before I talk about managed risk, I would like to talk about trading strategies about for short-term traders and also trading strategies 
for intraday trader. What are the strategies? How to find you our entry levels and strategies? Then after that, I'm going to go to how to manage our risk between being a short-term trader and intraday trader. And if time allow, um, I'm going to take on some case study as well. If only times allow, because uh, during next week presentation, I will go through slightly what we have covered tonight because it is important for us to know about uh, our profile. Okay, with that, I uh, just want to leave you this last slides uh, for those that have uh, are going into the other program called Identified Market Reversal. Then after that, you're hungry for, you want to go deeper, uh, you can consider this program. So with that, um, hope to see you next week and thank you for staying true for the last one hour and four minutes. So it's my pleasure. So once again, my pleasure to deliver this topic and uh, also thank you our sponsor CME and definitely uh, with Philip Futures. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much for the insights tonight, Kon Hao, and thank you very much, everybody, for your time tuning into this webinar tonight. If you would like to sign up for part two of this series, you can do so in the email that we will be sending out to you soon. And in that same email, you will find a link to today's webinar recording so you can watch it again if you would like to. That's all for today. Thank you, everyone, and goodbye.